Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Yes, I'm outside because today we're going to be stone washing a couple of blades. I meant to do this video a few years ago, but I didn't. I've got a simple little stone washing unit that I got from the local Canadian Tire hardware store. You can find these little tub uh, stone wash vibration things in almost any hobby shop anywhere. And I guess in some hardware stores and such. Uh, I've got ball bearings in there, steel ball bearings, and I've got ceramic pieces uh, round that are cut on an angle on the end. And I've got a whole tub full of them, and I'm going to put these two blades in there. This blade is the Free Tiger FT21 that I broke the tip off of. I've already done the video on how I repaired the tip, so it's got a reasonable tip right now. And since it's a repair anyways, I'm going to try stone washing it. Oh, I've got to take the thumb studs off first. And then I've got this knife. This is one of my early knives. I've got two Enlan EL01 knives. And uh, since I thought I'm going to do one, might as well do two and give it a try. Uh, this is D2 apparently, and this is 8CR13 MOV. So I just want to see how they do. So before I go any further, I'm going to have to take that thumb stud off. But... I'll show you the device that I'm using to do the uh, vibrating in. Okay, here you go. It's one of these simple vibrating units. I am going to put it on the concrete later on. I just lifted it up to take the picture. So a little motor in here, some springs, and there's the inside of it right there. You've got uh, you know, the ball bearings and uh, the shot. Well, in the ceramic, I should say. Whoops, I'm off camera. There we go. So the ceramic stuff, it just shakes like crazy. There is a lid that goes on it, and you screw the lid down. That's what that post is about. So it makes a truckload of noise. So when I start it up, it's going to be noisy. Stay tuned. Okay, so I take the blades, and I'm just going to stick them in there. One on either side to start with. They're going to move all over the place. And then they, they're just going to shake up and move. I can't show you it because it's just going to make a mess if I let it run open. So this goes on there. It's got a rubber washer to help seal it from vibrating. From uh, Stops it from loosening up from the vibrations. It absorbs the uh, vibrations. And then this thumb screw. Now, I'm going to run it very briefly before I put it down on the concrete. That's what it does. It just shakes. You can't even see it shake. It's just moving so fast. So these are the two knives that I put through the stonewash machine. Right on the start, I need to say one important thing. I do not recommend using the kind of stonewash equipment that I had. <laughs> I had it in there over three days, solid, 24-7, well not seven, 24-3, uh, actually three and a half, so a lot of hours. The 8CR13, uh, you can see there is a stone wash treatment on there now. It doesn't look great, it looks okay, and it really highlighted, um, you know, right along that edge where the bevel ends and the flat started, and then on this side did right there an awful lot more than even the rest. So it's kind of spotty. There and there, you know, it kind of did a lot. This knife is the knife that I... Yeah, that's 8CR13. And, you know, I did sharpen it quite well. It's got a nice mirror edge now. This guy... This is the knife that I reground the belly because I had broken the tip off. And look at that. It's just beautiful. The stone wash has taken off most of the logo. You can just see it faintly there now. I like that. That's a little more faint. And, you know, it's a very light stone wash. I think a barrel that rotates with uh, ceramic and um, ball bearings inside it would be much better, much faster for doing a stone wash. Uh, this thing worked, but it took an awful long time. One huge thing is 
I knew that it was going to chip the edge, but it chipped the edge worse than I thought. And I think especially with this knife here, this uh, Free Tiger, I think the D2 on here is very, very hard. It chipped and I think it created a bunch of micro cracks. I had to sharpen this thing for almost an hour to get a nice clean edge. I would sharpen it and it would look like it was all nice and clean. And then I would just rub my thumb across it this way and little pieces would chip off again because there had been micro cracks created in it. This D2 I think was made too hard. I prefer D2 at around 60, 5960 Rockwell hardness. That gives it a lot of durability and toughness. If you get too high on D2, too high on the hardness, then you start getting a brittle blade and then you get those cracks a whole lot more easily. It's probably also why you know it broke on the tip as easily as it did. I misunderstood some comments. Some people were saying that you know you could you know do it differently so it wouldn't be as thick behind the grind. And I said, sure, it's going to be as thick behind the grind. You can't help it because of where it broke off. I misunderstood what I could have done is I could have done it, taken it off this way. Let's see if I got the marker here. I could have, you know, taken off the tip and instead of removing steel on the belly, remove steel here. I would have then had to fix the um, swedge here as well. And um, I actually wanted it to be a little thicker behind the grind. It's not terribly thick behind the grind right now. So I don't think it's too thick behind the grind. This is sharpened to 18 degrees. And so, yeah, it's got a bit of a bevel there on the belly, uh, the sharpening bevel, but not bad at all. And, you know, the tip is fine. It cuts really well. That's not too abrupt of a belly. I think that was a really good fix. I am very happy with what we have. I'm leaving fingerprints on there already. Stonewash doesn't leave fingerprints prints quite as badly as satin finish, but there they are. And uh, it's a beautiful knife. And it's not, let's see, there you go. It's not terribly too short. It doesn't look like it's too short for the handle. Looks like it fits. I did find one thing though, the access lock. I'm getting lock stick on an access lock. So this lock bar, yeah, it's stuck right now again. It doesn't want to come back. I have to push hard to get it to release. I uh, took out my Dremel tools and I buffed it because I thought maybe the stone wash left the surface a little too rough. And so I buffed that surface where the lock bar slides on and it's made zero difference. It, it's locking up exactly the same. It does look like I got a little bit of oil in there. Oil with an access lock is actually not good. Oil helps create lock stick. So uh, I'm going to need to take this thing apart and make sure I get every bit of oil off that lock bar and off the tang of the blade. So I'm both happy and disappointed with stone washing on the equipment that I have. I'm happy that it turned out so-so, not terrible, but uh, it's definitely not my first choice in stone washing equipment. That kind of shaker vibrator machine just doesn't work very well. I recommend a tumbling machine. But that's it for today. Stone wash, yeah, it works. I'm going to try to find where I bought my shot, like the ball bearings, I should say, not shot, ball bearings, and the ceramic pieces, because uh, ceramic pieces tend to work the best, but they you know round off a bit, and steel ball bearings are also good because they impact the steel and help to create that stone wash look. That's why I chose a combination of both of those things. Of course, I bought mine in Canada, but I'll try to find links for Canada and United States for good stuff for doing stone washing. The links are down below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Have a good summer.